All right, welcome back to Full House, 7th edition, where we are playing Vanheim. It is turn 29. Uh, we could have, yes, <laughs> definitely going to be some fighting. Yeah, we're getting attacked quite a bit here by our enemies. Uh, research and Conjuration is finished, level 5. That's for the greater air elementals. Uh, and that is really essential, and now we're working on our evocation research, so we've talked about that. Still doing a little site searching, not that it worked out for us. Uh, and then Arcocephaly trying to unlock their capital. This is actually a pretty important battle for us as well. Uh, and yeah, we've seen this force. It's you know the, the Wind Riders, the, the proud few, um, and they're up against just an absolutely massive bird army that is summoning uh, their own air elementals. Yeah, in fact, I don't think Arcocephaly. They only have a few mages here, probably doing a little bit of body ethereal spam, maybe, or I'm not even sure. Yeah, you know, flying shards, some low-level uh, evocations, <laughs> and like yeah all the birds uh but all the birds actually like might cause problems for the air elementals to be able to make contact uh, and there is magic weapons on this bless as i recall yeah so they have magic weapons and they've been enlarged so they're not quite size six so they can still be trampled by air elementals but the size differential does matter uh, so since they're only one size smaller than the air elementals they're not going to take as much trample damage and then they just have to knock them down one size and then the air elementals can no longer trample them and then of course now the birds are provi providing uh, a good amount of shielding. Now, I mean, since everybody's flying, everybody's kind of jumping around anyway, so the air elementals are able to get back in there. Um, but yeah, it does look like at least one bird squad has routed. Um, I'm not really seeing any advance in cast, I don't think. Oh wait, no, I lied. Yeah, there's definitely some advance in cast here, although it looks like, yeah, armies of Caleb are routed, so <laughs> this is the result that we were hoping for, although I don't think it was without loss uh, for Arcocephaly. And I mean, this is, you know, Ar Arco can't keep this up, definitely, you know, because their, their capital keeps getting locked down. Uh, yeah, they only lose seven Wind Riders, uh, but still, you know, that's like at least a turn of recruitment. And, you know, Kalem loses a bunch of birds, but it's just the Spirehorn Warriors, and they're large enough, and they have enough forts. Like, this is frustrating, I'm sure, but it's actually, other than the fact that it's tying them up, right, so they can't, say, attack me or attack any of their other neighbors, like, that part of it is, is pretty nasty. Um, and, I mean, like, these losses definitely matter, but, you know, they lose, like, one of these casters. No, sorry, they're just a leader, so, like, that's not a big deal. They do lose one Seraph, but that's not that expensive of a mage. Like, these losses aren't crippling. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, there's no way. <laughs> this is still got to be frustrating for Caleb because uh, I'm sure they would like to move on uh, to other things. Uh, and then we bounce a scout off of Pangea because we're curious to see, you know, yeah, there's no patrolling, and there hasn't actually been a province defense dump either. So we'll see if, you know, that tips our hand. Uh, and it does look like Pangea's decided to start raiding out. Uh, so, like, yeah, here's the majority, I'm guessing, uh, of their forces. And, like, yeah, we just have a little bit of province defense here. So this is kind of fine. And so we'll see, like, yeah, we have, I, honestly, I'm, I was expecting a lot more uh, white centaur. Maybe there's still some in the capital, but, yeah, we probably should have moved in sooner looks like possibly they've focused i mean i did see that there was some minotaur in their capital uh, but this is more than i was expecting and i wonder if possibly i, mean, I guess they i can't imagine they've been recruiting less than maximum uh white centaur maybe their dominion strength isn't that high i hadn't really thought about that uh, but anyway, obviously we lose that. They lose a couple harpies. Uh, that's okay. We'll see. We'll see if like maybe they push on our capital. You know, sort of a base trade situation. Uh, you know, rather than coming back to defend their own capital, and that could be a bit problematic for us. I think we'll have enough time to recruit up enough fan here uh, that we'll be able to hold at least that Pangean force. But being able to hold the Pangean force. Uh, and the Kalasan force, that's pretty unlikely. Uh, speaking of Kalasa, this is going to be, no, not all the monkeys. Uh, so just a small raiding group. Is this where our skeletons are? It is. Uh, so we'll see. They don't really have much of a bless. Uh, so, okay, but they have a fellow here that's going to do body ethereal, so that's going to be pretty effective. But yeah, these sacreds actually are not like that scary. Well, they do have awe. Yeah, they're, they're pretty killy, but they have no protection. And skeletons don't care about awe, but they definitely care about uh, body ethereal. So this may still actually work out for us. Yeah, right? Because skeletons don't have morale. So, like, while we absolutely got torn up there, you know, the skeletons don't care, whereas, like, their sacreds do. So while Kalasa is significantly larger than us, and the bull, you know, demands an answer... Especially once we get Storm up, right, and those monkey archers become a lot less useful, I actually think that this war could go really well for us. It's just we also need to finish the war with Pangea 
and make sure that we don't get jumped by the birds in the meantime maybe should just bite the bullet and reach out uh, to Calum and offer a non-aggression pact at this point because uh, yeah, they might be kind of worried about getting attacked by other people because that's the other thing. Like, you keep failing battles like this. It's not a good look. Um, most of their neighbors, maybe all of their neighbors at the moment, are busy. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of okay for them. And anyway, this one works out for us. Uh, but, yeah, we uh, things this, this war could work out for us, these wars. Could, things could work in theory maybe uh, speaking of things working this is our full army just going against a little bit of province defense so this should work out just fine we'll probably a trit out whoops that's a different battle uh, yeah we attrit out some long dead you know as happens sieging down Pangea uh, is gonna be a colossal hassle but in a lot of ways we're kind of okay with it just being locked down because the white centaur are really the only thing that are super dangerous to us well, maybe not super dangerous, uh, but the rest of the Pangea's mundane troops are not too worried about, maybe rightly, maybe wrongly. Uh, so we do take that, uh, although we lose uh, another two provinces. So this looked like a thug. Uh, yeah, and this is the the point buffer, I think, that was helping out. Or She's really kind of a thug in her own right. Uh, was helping the pretender out. So it looks like, you know, it was confident enough to split. And, you know, I know I said that we were going to send the air elementals to help our army out. Um, yeah, we probably sh still should. Because it's it's just, you know, when, when it's split, that's real tempting. But we can't magic phase all of our sword guys. Uh, so this is actually a fairly safe move uh, for Kilasa right now. But you know, if we could, if we could fight the Pretender without even the point buffing help, obviously, like that would be really helpful. Uh, losing provinces less helpful though, so <laughs> that's unfortunate. And then I gotta believe that this is the bull. Uh, ah, the bull and the army. Okay, and and there's a point buffer here as well. So yeah, maybe there's there's multiple thugs. Uh, that's unfortunate. And a large communion here as well. Uh, probably, yep, Soul Slay. Okay, so that's pretty dangerous for us. Obviously, like, we don't have a ton of units, so, you know, our van here is we don't love Soul Slay. Like, yeah, Kilasa seems like a solid player here, uh, and they're, you know, doing smart things. So we're going to have our work cut out for us, even though, yes, like, in some ways, right, this war could go well for us. Uh, we'd really need to come up with answers for these thugs uh, and answers, you know, for their uh, pretender. And then, you know, we don't actually have an answer for all those uh, archers just yet either. Though I do think the air elementals uh, will help us with that. Uh, this is our fort. Yeah, and it's probably going to get breached. Yep, immediately. The monkeys are pretty, uh, pretty strong, and we also, you know, don't really have much in there. So we'll have to evacuate this turn. But that's okay. We kind of need those mages to go do things this turn anyway. Uh, so then we have some unexpected events, rumors of plague. We lose a little bit of tax. That's all right. Hey, and we buy some gems on the cheap. We do like that. We have a little bit of patrolling somewhere, and I will catch you guys after the cut. All right, this is the situation and what we're doing about it. Uh, most importantly, we are attacking Pangea this turn. So, you know, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, there's a lot that has gone wrong with this uh, in, in that vein of things going wrong. Uh, because we lost territory, right? Now we have additional provinces, additional enemy provinces to move through. Uh, the moves that we could have made last turn, so when I, I checked that we could reach Pangea uh, with our, our air elemental casters last turn, they could reach. Now they cannot reach. Uh, so we could delay this another turn, but I mean, we're already we're already in trouble, right? Our hand is, is kind of being forced here. Uh, I probably should have attacked, you know, we've talked about that. There's not that many white centaurs, right? This is suspiciously low. Uh, so part of me feels that, you know, I'm being baited, right? This is probably like only half the total. Uh, so we'll see. We're just, you know, we're going to rely on our bless and fingers crossed. I, I, I shouldn't have stopped the chop. I, I didn't stay true to the spirit of the build and perhaps now we'll, we'll pay the price. You know, the other option is, you know, we could take one additional turn. Uh, Kalosa will likely storm this turn and, you know, it's going to be difficult for us to get back anyway. Uh, but I, I do think that if we don't move immediately, there's a pretty good chance that we'll just have to fight in our capital with whatever we can recruit there which will be relatively substantial so like it's still that's probably what we're going to end up doing anyway uh so it's like maybe we wait for our air elemental casters but then it's like okay where does the army go we could backtrack certainly you know we could well we can't jump on this fort if we want to hit pangea later we could try to take this province but in some ways i kind of want this as like a diplomatic shield right you see a stack of stuff uh from kalasa here and you know we would 
would rather it have to spend time marching to the north, uh, which it probably is going to be doing, uh, but rather than being able to mess with us down here. So we'll see. I don't know how closely these guys are working together, so possibly, you know, Kalasa will be like, okay, it's time to also pick up Pangea's territory and maybe they'll just attack through, right? This is definitely a paper shield, these empty provinces. Uh, and then the other thing that we can do since our air elemental casters are not going to be joining us in this pivotal battle uh, is we can at least raid with them. <laughs> so this is kind of sad to be using this many air gems. This is uh, definitely overkill in terms of the province defense, uh, but we might run into thugs or various raiding groups, in which case I think, you know, two air elementals is absolutely going to be warranted and may in fact not be enough, uh, so we'll see. It is sad that, like, yeah, we just haven't really been able to get the kit online. I do think we are, yeah, we're starting to forge, like, our first set of kit. Uh, I will say that, like, this Bless, you know, we've, we've talked about the issues with this build, but um, the Bless is just not great uh, in terms of actually beating province defense, so, you know, our thugs actually need a decent amount of gear help, and with the paths that uh, Vanheim has, actually kind of missing like some important uh, province defense clearing kit. Uh, so anyway, we'll at least have, you know, one set of gear available on the light side and we'll probably send a Van Hurst deep and, you know, start to raid. But yeah, we really do need to step that up because uh, we're going to need the air gems uh, for some upcoming battles. Well, we won't need it for this upcoming battle at least. So there's a silver lining. Uh, but we've got two armies that we're going to have to deal with uh, from Colossa and air elementals definitely will help us with that. Uh, otherwise, continuing to retreat with our ogres. And sadly, uh, I was thinking about trying to make a stand here uh, with all of, you know, we have our pretender killing, you know, squad here and available, uh, but they're not, they, they would not like to run into this army. And I do think there's a possibility that Kalasa, you know, dodges off of this fort in the hopes of catching, you know, various, like, counter raiding groups. Uh, so while this is a fairly obvious move here for this thug, and, you know, they may end up coming up here, and, you know, I was very tempted, right, to set up all of our thugs to catch that, or, like, maybe the pretender splits off from the army, right, and takes this province, you know, rejoins with this thug, that would be pretty ideal. On the other hand, like, we don't really have the time or the mages, uh, we do at least have the gems to rebuild all of this. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, once, if we lose it, that's it. Uh, so, you know, if we try to engage anywhere that's next to their army, where their army could be moving, that's really risky. Uh, so, you know, we're probably going to be giving this province up. I don't know. We'll see. It's also like a really obvious raid for them to make. So I am interested to see what Kalasa does. They do seem like a solid player, right? So they've done a good job of protecting their pretender. So it'll be interesting to see if they push forward with their pretender. And then maybe we'll just have to gamble one turn, you know, at some point that they are going to push forward with only their pretender. Or we may just have to wait, right, until things start to get dire and they get close to our capital. And we also have a stack of van here. It's not going to be ideal trying to use our kill squad in an army fight. Uh, but we, speaking of that, we are doing some things to try to assist because it is looking more and more like Kalos is going to be cautious enough, right, to not put their pretender in a position where we can easily snipe it. So if we do end up having to fight it in a large army fight, we're going to need enchantment level two. And we need enchantment level two uh, for flight. So this is certainly no guarantee that, you know, our, our kill squad will be able to make contact, uh, but it's going to be a lot more likely, right, if they can fly around the battlefield. And then we do have to be careful because they won't have uh, storm flying. So if we put up a storm, you know, they won't be able to fly in and, and make contact with the pretender. So there's a pretty good chance we're not going to have storm by that point anyway, which is also kind of why, you know, I pushed it out because like, well, we're probably not going to hit evocation five anyway. So we might as well pick up some other useful research. Uh, and then alteration three is just for mist form. It's going to help a bit with our rating. And like I said, we do need to start turning up the rating. Uh, so yeah, I threw that in there. This is like maybe a bit questionable because it's not going to help us all that much in large army fights, which I don't know. We're going to need to do raiding and large army fights. So I could go either way on that one. Uh, but we are much more likely to hit alteration three uh, before things go down versus evocation five. Uh, and we probably will still manage to get evocation three. I don't know. We'll see. And we've talked about how mist is. I'm not sure how useful that one's going to be. 
Uh, so that's our research. That's our rating for the most part. Uh, we are going to raid with, you know, Tomb Shadow here. We're just going to throw him at this fort. And this is mostly just because I'm curious. Like, yeah, I actually set everybody to retreat. Excellent. So maybe they'll survive. Probably not. Uh, but I'm just curious to see, like, you know, is Colossa patrolling their fort? How much province defense, you know, have they put on it? You know, this is just really just more information gathering. Uh, and then we are going to go after these barbarians. I'm a little bit afraid because, you know, we only have 12 Van Heers. Uh, but, you know, Bless is strong. Van Heers are good. So should be fine. Uh, we do want these Earth Gems. And, you know, I don't know. Like, Kalem is busy for now. But then, you know, there's a good chance they won't be busy in the not-too-distant future. So if we leave a bunch of independents on our borders, we do still have this throne sitting here on the border in our cap circle. But that's a little more forgivable. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, luckily, nobody important can see our dog province that we have not cleared in many, many turns, <laughs> which, yeah, it, that's our shared shame. I just, you know, I don't know. I haven't found the time. I was tempted to send the ogres, right, because we're moving the ogres back, and the ogres could, you know, kill these dogs without too much trouble, but this mountain pass is actually open, right? So this thug could move in and raid this, and I just don't think this province is just really worthless. I think it was given, like, something like 20 or 30 gold, haven't found any sites there yet we haven't done much site searching here yet but this is also not really a place that we can be site searching right now so i mean while it is a bit embarrassing that these dogs have just been sitting on one of our provinces for i don't even know 10 10 turns now <laughs> something like that it, it's also like not really a province we can take advantage of at the moment uh so recruitment wise you know we're mostly uh let's see yeah we're recruiting van here's uh a van jarl in the capital you know it's always sad not to get uh, the cap only recruitment but we probably have enough dwarves by now really if anything maybe too many dwarves and you know it's a that's a that's because things aren't going well otherwise we would have switched uh into more vanadrots sooner uh but they just they cost too much and we we can't really utilize them yet either i mean they are excellent air elemental summoners so in that sense they're nice uh but you know in terms of the amount if, if that's all that we're having them do, that's not that much more useful than Van Jarls. Uh, so we really, you know, things like Wrathful Skies and Storm, you know, big air castings, which we just don't have the research for yet. So they're not super useful to us above and beyond Van Jarls, and we can't really afford them. We're getting a Van Hurst here because that's what we can afford, and like one Elven Troop because that's what we can afford. We'll probably actually switch over to the Surf Warriors again. Uh, because in a similar way that we just need mines, right? So we need soul slay targets because there is a soul slay communion here. And, you know, we don't want our van here to be eating those soul slays. We would prefer just the human serfs uh, to eat those. So we will need to build up some serfs uh, for the army fight. Uh, and then speaking of our kill squad, I didn't actually, they are, they're just sneaking into this province uh, for the moment. So, you know, we're going to keep them around. And like I said, anywhere that we think that a thug is going to go, that the army can't make it there that's where we're going to try to ambush like the thugs and or pretenders so for the moment we're just going to sneak and you know be in the area and bide our time and hopefully an opportunity will present itself uh not too much news in terms of the wider world yeah we really don't have a ton of scouting uh we we did talk with TNN. TNN unfortunately has a non-aggression pact with Kalasa, uh, so you know they weren't super interested, but they were open to the idea, right? They said, "Hey, you know, if you have some good news, shoot it over. Like things could change." Uh, so it's not impossible, uh, but I probably should reach out uh, to, I think we saw Marverni here as well, who was just eliminated. So we should, probably should actually move the scout back over and, you know, see whose flag has popped up there in the meantime, uh, because whoever just killed Marverni probably is unoccupied at the moment. And this is a very small border, unfortunately, for them to be attacking Kailasa. Right, a lot of Kalasa's largest, I mean, TNN really is their largest neighbor. Maybe uh, Tian Chi is their other largest neighbor, uh, or maybe, you know, Pangea if they'd taken this throne. Obviously, Pangea is not looking, well, <laughs> they're certainly not going to be an ally to us. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, there's just, there's not actually a ton of people uh, who, you know, have the borders uh, and, you know, the availability to be attacking Kalasa. So, at least for the moment, I think we're kind of in this war on our own. Hopefully our other agreements hold and, you know, we don't have other people jumping in on us. And I think that more or less covers turn 29.